everybody can you hear me okay? Yeah. All right, all right. Um, hi everybody and welcome to the San Francisco Conservatory. I'm Katherine Cook and I'm on the voice faculty here at SFCM for those of you who don't know me. I have the incredible honor of introducing my colleague and dear, dear friend, Joyce DiDonato today. It's Joyce Weekend at SFCM. I think we should just call it, yeah. Um, Joyce, as you know, is truly one of the most influential and consummate artists of our generation. She's a singular artist who is her authentic self, both on and off stage. What an absolute joy it's been for me uh, as her friend to see her star rise over the years. She's a shining example of how music and art can connect and heal the world one concert at a time. Joyce will be receiving an honorary doctorate, giving the commencement address, and will be performing uh, at our commencement tomorrow with the extraordinary Jake Hagee at the piano. <laughs> Yesterday, Jake and Joyce presented a wonderful question and answer presentation, and it was such a gift for our students and for all of us to be inspired by Joyce and her honesty, not only about her journey as an artist, but also as an activist. I know you have her bio in the program, but in addition to winning three Grammy Awards, <laughs> casual, <laughs> an Olivier Award, and countless accolades in productions around the world, Joyce has most recently been touring her show called Eden. It's a multifaceted initiative which is touring 45 cities and five consonant, continents. Eden has produced an album and also includes a groundbreaking education program. Eden helps us examine our individual connection to nature and how it impacts the world through music. If you haven't seen the documentary, go to Joyce's website online and watch it. It's extraordinary and so inspiring what Joyce is doing through this project. Um, at the end of the show called Eden, each audience member is given a packet of seeds and is asked, and in this time of upheaval, which seed will you plant today? I can hardly wait to watch Joyce work with our students and see what seeds are planted. See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> she will also be doing a short Q&A after the class, which of course you are all welcome to stay for. Thank you to Joyce for being here, for sharing her generosity, her passion, her artistry, and just a joy in everything she does. Please join me in welcoming the one and only Joyce DiDonato! You're the kind. Thank you, Kathy Cook, my fellow shocker. Um, hi, it's really nice to see you guys. Thanks, thanks, hello, thanks, huh? thanks for being uh, for being here. I actually probably don't need it, um, but I'm so, I'm really, really, really looking forward to being here. The whole weekend feels just like bursting with possibility and hope and excitement, and I'm I'm really thrilled to be here with all the generations present. I love it. You even brought glitter with you. I'm very impressed. I love it. Um, I, we have four fantastic singers that um, I'm really looking forward to working with today. And I told them this, but I would like to share with you guys as well. The way I look at a, a masterclass is really not a performance. Um, it may feel like it to them when they start, but that's not why I'm here. I hope I get to hear them many times in performance, but this for me is about process, and this is about what tools can we play with 
as if we're, we're in a giant sandbox? What tools can we play with to figure out how to go deeper, how to free up, how to, to work on things? Um, and singers are here, yay! So I look forward to questions with you guys afterwards. If anything comes up, you know, catalog it and we'll work with it. But um, the whole idea is to create really a safe space so that we can just get, you know, in the sandbox and just see what comes up. And hopefully, you know, it will help all of us. I think I always learn more than anybody actually in these things. I'm this eternal student up here. But hopefully you guys will be able to also take things with you that then you can incorporate into your process as well. So without further ado, I think we're starting with Mozart. <laughs> I would like that too. <laughs>
student. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know where I, I literally could not have sung that when I was your age. <laughs> like, literally, I was busy singing Berta. We talked about that yesterday. <laughs> um, but, so, amazing. Talk to me a little bit about how, how much you've been doing this. If this is a new aria. <laughs> or a couple of times. Uh, I've, done, I've probably been working on it for like a year. Okay. Um, we did the full show in March. Did you sing the whole role? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Lucky you, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you also learn Anyo? A little bit in the practice room. Yeah, yeah, because I, I mean, a lot of times Anyo is like the gateway to Sesto, and in many ways it's harder to sing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like doing Dorabella's second aria the whole night. <laughs> um, so, okay, because I can tell you have him in your body, and I can tell you, you really know the story. Uh, the emotional story, not just the plot, you know? Mm -hmm. So this is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really great role for you for a lot of reasons, because I can see like, yeah, I could see you on stage singing him. So sometimes when you're looking about what Ari is to present or to audition with, you also wanna help the, pe the audition people, the jury, the panel, to say, I can see her as, I can see him as. And it's, that's a really good thing. Um, one of the things I think that's tricky about this aria is to ride the emotional wave without writing it here. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. To let it, that you're riding the wave here and you're embodying it and you're allowing all of that heartbreak and tragedy and all of that to, to reside more here huh, than here, mm -hmm. right? Because that's where his power is. And one of, just, just a little bit of a gestural thing that I want you to just be careful about is that he never starts to feel sorry for himself. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have time to feel sorry for himself. He's gotta get her to look at him. Yeah. He's gotta get her to say, you know I love you, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no time to like go, well, gee, Vitalia, she would, she would just, you know, you can't, she is a powerhouse that you cannot let go of for one second. And you need that eye contact to burrow into the core of your heart okay. to go forward into what she is asking you to do. And every once in a while at the beginning, it starts to feel a little bit um, feeling sorry for yourself. Never let Tito's face out of your brain, never. And what you have to imagine doing is looking him in the eye and taking that sword and that knife and he recognizes you and you go ahead with it. That is quel que vorrai faro. And it has to be that clear and that horrifying. You know, it yeah. can't be lyric mezzo night. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, there's other things that you started to do and I can tell this is why I could tell that you've spent some time with this role, 
is you started to, you know, sort of, you know, odei, odio, all that. You started to do physical things, but you went about 30% of the way. Yeah. Because it's an audition place and it's a concert stage and it feels a little weird. One of the best pieces of advice I ever got was from Leonard Folia. We were doing Dead Man Walking and we were doing actually in Houston and we had an amazing intensive rehearsal period in the, in the rehearsal room. And it was like we were all doing a play. And I was walking with him down the evening of our first piano tech on stage. And I said, Lenny, don't, don't let me get all operatic and start to get, you know, opera-y mm -hmm. on this. And he looked at me, he stopped and he looked at me and he goes, Joyce, there's only two things that exist on stage. That which is true and that which is false. Mm -hmm. That's all that exists. But if you're giving us something that's 98% true, it's false. Mm -hmm. Feels pretty good. And for some reason, in the opera world, we kind of accept that. That sort of generic, gesture-y thing that looks operatic. Mm -hmm. And that's not good enough. So if you're going to look at God and say, you've got my back, right? You would better ask him if he's got your back. And there's no answer. And if you're going to say, Vitalia, look at me. Please, you have got to be 1,000% there. Whether you're on this stage or in an you know, audition with scary people out there or opening night at the San Francisco Opera. It's either true or false. Yeah. And make sure that truth is coming from this part of your body. Okay? That having been said, can we go back to the start and do a thing? For me, I think the big trick of this, if you can nail it, it's just how you attack, how you initiate sound on all those kind of exposed phrases. And if you marry that with pure legato, this sings itself. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> okay, can we start again? Yeah. yeah. And so the first place you're going to feel this, if the, when it's going to start in your mm, is with the first chords. Those come from you. It does not come from a piano. Mm. It does not come from instruments. It comes from the core of your being. Okay? <laughs> has you that tightly wrapped. If you drop eye contact, she's gone. Be brave. She asked me. And but yeah. when do you take the decision? Mm. I just right before I sing. So these first chords are. What do I say? I say I'm going. I'm going to kill him. I just need her. To, I mean, there's a lot that happens. Mm -hmm. It's not a da 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 da. Par no. <laughs> it's life and death. And it, she has you by a stranglehold in your guts. Mm -hmm. And you can't drop eye contact either. And you can't show it. And how do you speak to her? She's just completely emasculated you. And you know she's doing it. You know what she's doing. You know she is manipulating you. And you're here for it. Okay, those are the first chords. Yeah. 
that's it. Do you guys feel that? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same notes, <laughs> the same words. Yeah. It's the same rhythm. Do you see the difference of intensity and focus? It's not rocket science, but you have to be really brave. The odd thing is, when you are this clear, we're with you 100% of the time. The minute you give us the chance to let down, we might go, oh, oh, she's wearing pants, yeah, oh. We might <laughs> be distracted. So we are Vitalia at the same time. Don't give the audience one inch of letting down your focus, okay? And it comes from your body. Let's try this also. I want you to feel this subdivision in parto, like 16th note. Mm -hmm. Parto. Subdivision the whole time. And it's matubenio. And you can use the N into the M to help with that leap a little bit of the legato. Yeah. Easier in that octave, <laughs> admittedly, okay? I'm a little jet lagged. Okay, so can you now play it in a different way, the opening? Give us a different thing and let's see how you feel about it. Now, when you say parto, I think you repeat it because she's not listening. Yeah. Yeah. But my love, ma tu ben mio, mio, me ritorna in pace. That is super important. So don't let it be inevitable. This is a really important thing especially when you're a young opera singer and everything's being told to you about how to do everything and there's one right way and, and that's it, which is not really true, but that's what it feels like when you guys are here. <laughs> Don't forget, you're choosing the note you sing as the character, you're choosing the word that you sing. So it's constant searching. <laughs> Return with me in, in, in peace. You can't find the right word, mm -hmm. you know? You really can't. So keep in that Yeah, in pace. That's the perfect word. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. Was that, did I say the right thing? Mm -hmm. Okay? Can we try it one more time from Meco Ritorna in pace? Okay, thank you. 
so here, now we have parto, parto, deciso, decided. Mm -hmm. I really love you. Kind of a crying yeah. kind of a case, right? Then, sarò. Mm. For me, it becomes that kind of sarò. It's like a snake. It's like, don't make me do it. Don't make me do it. So all these chromatics and this line here, it's really hard to, to get yourself to the, I'm going to do it. Yeah. So all of this is about avoidance and it's a little bit, pardon me, but it's opera. We have to talk about these things. It's like a little bit like vomit of, of, the, of what she's asking you to do, right? Mm. So that really stretch that out, feel all the, the chromatics of that line and how hard it is to get through that phrase. Mm -hmm. Okay? Can you give us that? Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. <laughs> I mean, you come on, you have this big argument with her, and you're singing this. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, this shows us really so much of the torment of where you are. Yeah. Can we do all this page one more time with no consonants? <laughs> yeah. Just for fun? <laughs> Just for fun? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then can you do this fortissimo and really sharp this time for your intro? feels like it's going like where is it you know where it is you've sung this a hundred times in the studio you know where that ah is just trust it ah wah two directions mm -hmm. okay and yeah. yeah ready do it again and but really i i i don't believe that it's also in that direction mm, okay and finished product, but I want you to feel what that legato is. On saro and... Oh. 
all the time in the world. Yeah. into it. it has yeah. more urgency that yeah. way yeah So don't let me know that there's more coming Yeah. at that point. Okay? We have to stop. I'm so sorry. But, I mean, cause the ending, if you set it up well, and if you've worked on it, the ending kind of sings itself. Yeah. You know? And you've got that. <laughs> I mean, but if, after the work, I, and it's clear you've done the work on it. You know I mean? That sort of, if you've set it up in the right way. Mm -hmm. um, but as you go, I mean, I, I dare you I invite you, I implore you, you're here for a reason, give it 100%. We're with you, we're with you. And if you shy away, we're not gonna take you as seriously as we should. If you're not all there, every time you stand up in front of people and sing, mm -hmm. set that as your bar. Okay. Otherwise, eh, right? That none of us wanna be that kind of generic singer. That's not why you're here. Yeah? So be brave. You've done a lot of work. I mean, your voice is in really good shape. I think you're going to grow into this. This is a big sing. Yeah. You've got time to grow into this. So keep setting it up in a really legato, really healthy way as you go through. Probably put it away <laughs> for a little bit. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And sing a little bit um, the second aria. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. I really have jet lag brain because nothing is coming to my head right now. De per questo. De per questo. Oh. Oh, oh my God, it's the best. And you know, the, oh my God, the entrance to the finale. Anyway, oh. I digress. Yeah, right? But put it away a little bit and come back to it like in three or four months yeah. so that in these kind of arias that you're going to live with for a long time, I imagine you will, you don't ingrain it into a certain muscular groove over and over and over. Mm -hmm. You know, this is in really good shape. It'd be fun to just put it away until like the fall yeah. and then see where it is. And then you can approach it fr fresh. There are some arias as you get older that you're going to have to undo a lot of work if you've put it in and put it in and put it in and put it in, mm -hmm. you know? So especially the stuff that's a little bit heavier, just take a little break from it and then come back and see where it, where it is. But I think it's a beautiful aria. You're so compelling on stage, mm -hmm. so... Uh, committed and emotional that's why I challenge you to go all the way yeah. because you can and that's mm -hmm. what we want to live for mm -hmm. make sense yes beautiful hope thank, thank you, you. <laughs>
too much sound. Don't try to create a lot of sound. Just mm -hmm. let it settle there. Yeah. And it's gonna it's sort of gonna uh, a little bit more easily. Mm -hmm. It's sort of a musical thing I want to talk with you about. Yes. And it's ugh, French. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can have perfectly pronounced French. I mean perfectly pronounced. And they'll say, c'est pas français. <laughs> Oui, 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 c'est juste, mais c'est pas français. It's right, but it's not French. Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> and this is such an expressive aria, mm -hmm. but we're not allowed to express it the way we would express it in English, in mm -hmm. French. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have a very different way of mm -hmm. expressing, and everything is here, and everything just pours through right there, and they're not punching a lot of syllables at all. <laughs> and then they go here, mais c'est ta 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 ta. So, am I are we allowed to get close? I don't know these days what's happening. I want to show you articulation, okay? You have, and the, sorry, just give us one second here. At the bottom of the first page, you've got six accents, yeah. right? And all legato line, legato line, legato line, legato line. Then here, legato line, legato line, legato line, legato line, legato crescendo, accent on azaya, azaya, legato, 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 oh, legato, la, long line, and then oh, a bunch of French, a bunch of French, blah blah blah, still a bunch of French, and then finally here, you have the I don't know what it's called on uh, page six where you have the punto and the z. Uh, That's my Victor Borga. Uh, <laughs> uh, page six. Yeah, don't spend this whole. De la veillesse. Yes. This. De la veillesse. You're singing the whole aria like it's that articulation. Mm -hmm. you're, oh, you're pronouncing every syllable, you're expressing on every syllable, and we are missing this thing. Here's as a French hand. We are missing this thing that takes us all the way to the end. <laughs> and you are giving us all the emotion like it's TikTok. <laughs> 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 
And then here we are, the pourquoi m'as-tu quitté? Again, yeah, six so accents. Yeah. That's all the articulation is. is. And the rest is just this. Blah, 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 Okay? I mean, I mean, that's not really how you coach French, but... <laughs> so, we're, I don't know, you might want to look at this. We're going to do just vowels. Okay. No expression, okay. no emotion. Just give me the rolling of the vowels. And every time, maybe you've talked, every time you start the, an important word in French or a phrase, you jump it a little bit. Mm, okay. You don't accent it. L'année on va chasser l'année. Yeah. À chaque saison ramener le jeu et les habits. Nothing. This kind of thing. Yeah. Okay, so right now, only vowels. Okay. okay? No expression. on the first vowel. Okay. Yeah. As if it's one note, one note that doesn't go anywhere. Okay, okay. just that. Okay. And the French thing is da ba ta. So what you're doing is l'année, l'année. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Still just the vowel. Okay. And right on. Yeah, it's a recitative. Good. Keep going. you want to express, use all the consonants that are, yeah, all the consonants that you want, but there, they do not interrupt at all that train of vowel that's happening. Mm -hmm. And it's spinning out here. You're like threading it through the eye of the needle out here. Yeah. Okay, let's try it again. Okay. And think youthful on this. Think of the youth, the springtime. Mm -hmm. No, on the words. Let's thread it right through here. Okay, you got 
Voilà on chasse la nez. But did you hear how you went? La nez on va chasser. So this is why you've been working on it for a while. So you've got to kind of etch a sketch your brain a little bit, okay? <laughs> okay. And and overemphasize a little bit the French. <laughs> did it work? I need some more singing. Oh, why not? <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Oh, it's gone. <laughs> We just figured out a big life thing. Okay. It just gets too new. So do you hear, if you go, I mean, you're giving me a little bit of like Mimi on this. And that's not Debussy. So la nuit, on va chasser la nuit. That's the expression. Yeah. Okay? I mean, not exactly, but right. it goes here. And then it goes there, and then I still have something more to say, and then I want to tell you this too. <laughs> okay? That's your springboard. Now, but also enjoy that other vowel. And don't give up on the new. That's yeah. Italian. Yeah. There it's finished. Okay. Okay? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. And you've got to make it legato between. You're giving a glottal. Okay. It just happens here. Yeah. And. Better. the same pitch. We're getting a lot of like waves, mm -hmm. you know, it, which is expressive. And I get why you're doing it, because you're expressing it as you would express a literal translation in English. But that's not French. Okay. It has to keep going there. It yeah. keeps going. And I'm chasing it as a right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it, so it's spinning okay. out here, and it never goes inside for indulgence. It never comes in the way we would with Italian. Okay. Keep it spinning right out here. Ashaku. Go. Okay, for example, if you land on saison. You're always a little bit ahead of the beat. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, and. Crescendo, crescendo, and you're singing this quite loud, and it's just accented. Mm -hmm. So it's not declamatory as you would in Italian. It's oh, mon oh. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a little bit more. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. It's not this. She's not super demonstrative yeah. until when she cries out his name at the end. Yeah. It's all contained, contained, and that's where the heartbreak comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you starting to feel it now? Yeah. You guys hearing the difference? The the <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> then you're. I'm I'm constantly going forward on each of those notes. Okay. Not rushing, mm -hmm. but you're. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very legato. Yeah. Same thing. And a sacro. A big S will help oh, you with okay. that. Okay. Uh, let's go back to Ashaku, so you can keep feeling that going over. You're in that dot slur. Um, just keep it, mm, 
barreling throughout through the vowel. Okay, and the consonants happen out here. Never inside. One more time. And it's piano. And. <laughs> super vertical yeah. yeah but you can do the other way yeah. and it changes this completely mm -hmm. and then when you go and you sing come scoglio or your town repertoire they're gonna go oh wow she's really proficient in her languages mm -hmm. <laughs> it's in yeah. its style mm -hmm. you know so the um the doula was really great let's try that again okay. yeah so decla declamation in french comes through that sort of accent getting getting ahead rather than the italian way Okay, so douleur involontaire, effort superflu, lion. Okay, here, and. Douleur superflu. That was very Italian, yeah. But the douleur involontaire was great. Did you guys hear that? It was really good. And. Great, but it doesn't stop after toujours. Pleure toujours, l'enfant. Voila. Yeah. Delia. No, do do that again. It was so good. Are you feeling it now? Yeah. You just 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 like that. So good. Do that. And then when you, okay, oh now this is fun, right? Do you hear that? And then you can go and take a lot of time on the plush, and we'll go, oh, oh, right? Yeah. So play with that, pretend okay. you are like, who, I don't know who your favorite singer is, but just artist, artistry, artistry, from douleur again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, douleur involontaire, effort superflu, l'IA pleure toujours l'enfant qu'elle l'a plus. La plus. Play with it. Play, pretend you're super French. Okay? Do that. Okay, also I'm gonna don't land on don't land on any note. Because you do la la volontaire. Don't land. It just keeps happening. <laughs> Yeah. your breath differently as you yeah. go, but do you feel the difference? Yeah. Be really studious about that. Okay. Don't sing this for like two months and just literally go, je viens chercher la grève solitaire, douleur involontaire et fort superflu. Take it out of rhythm and in rhythm. Yeah. This isn't a vocal thing for you at all. And the French pronunciation is very good, but go just to recitation. Literally for two months, 
And without singing a note, this would be completely transformed and people would think, do you speak French? <laughs> I promise you, it's well, really, yeah. trust it. Okay. So much of the work you guys can do doesn't have to be hacking your way through the aria time after time and time again. Just say this for me, yes. just from je viens chercher in that style. Je viens chercher la grève solitaire. Even more. Je viens chercher la grève solitaire. Again. Je viens chercher la grève solitaire. And in a different rhythm. Je viens chercher la grève solitaire. But uh, je viens chercher la grève solitaire. Je viens chercher la grève solitaire. Now sing it. You'll learn a lot about how you want to sing it by just playing with it spoken. Yeah. As if you're a French actress. <laughs> okay? Because vocally this isn't, there's no problem. Just let the, the lower tessitura settle a bit. Yeah. Um, and, but I would not sing it and I would only recitate it. Okay. Is that a word? <laughs> It is now. <laughs> it's beautiful. But if you can make this French, yes. it, it puts you in a different category. It puts you in a different category. Okay? okay. Beautiful Taylor. Thank you. <laughs> Sunrise by Jake Hedgy. Jake Hedgy, Hedgy, sorry. I know, I feel like he's a rather unknown, um, yeah. Composer? Oh. <laughs> a contractor, maybe. <laughs> Can you, sorry, do you mind just set this up a little bit? So oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. yeah. Just give us some. Uh, right, yeah. Okay, so um, this is based on a story, um, real life story about Christine Zewoldska who was um, a Polish woman, she was a poet, a lyricist, and more importantly, a Holocaust survivor. Um, she ended up surviving because she changed her name about three times. Uh, she ended up walking out of the Warsaw ghetto in the middle of the day, just because she was that amazing. Um, <laughs> she was incredible. Um, and she ended up in Auschwitz uh, as a political prisoner, not as um, uh, like a prisoner of the camp, um, as a death camp person because um, she changed her name so that it was not a Jewish name, but it was a Polish Catholic name. Um, so this aria is kind of the peak of the piece. She is describing uh, probably the worst moment of her life. Uh, she had to basically uh, beat up her own. She had to betray her fellow prisoners and um, beat up her, her fellow Jewish community members. Oh, <laughs> 
journey with this 
masterpiece piece. <laughs> uh, so I just did it on my master's recital, um, and because I wanted to um, focus a lot on my Jewish identity, and and you know this piece is obviously very special for me and and that, um, but it's very early in my process with this piece and that I've only been working on it for about a year now. Um, oh, but that's, that's a fair amount, yeah. Yeah, but um, I had the amazing, incredible opportunity of actually coaching it with Jake. Um, so that was priceless for me. Um, mm -hmm. But I think I learned more and more about her and about this piece every day. Because I, I, I think I never stopped thinking about it. Have you ever thought what you would do in her shoes? Oh, um, <laughs> I, I think it's one of those things that it's, uh, we, we don't want to think about it, but we have to. Mm. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a gun to the head situation of, of what would you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's, that's what's very moving about it is it's so raw mm -hmm. and so human. Um, and it's clear that you, this is a very personal piece for you, <laughs> which is fantastic and a great reason why I think you should present it when you get a chance, because it's, you know, it's a great story to be telling and sharing with people. Um, there is a slight danger in living it too much for yourself. Absolutely. And I'll bring up Leonard Foley again. I mentioned him earlier about there's only truth and something that is true or something that is false on stage. I was also doing Dead Man Walking with him. And there's a, a, new, a horrifying scene that the mother of the prisoner has just had her last conversation with him. Mm -hmm. But she forgot to say goodbye and she collapses outside the prison. She can't go back in. He'll be executed in an hour and she didn't say goodbye. And the role of Sister Helen is there being strong for her, comforting her, and then the minute the mother leaves, Sister Helen finally breaks and expresses the pain and the torment that she's having. And we were doing a run through, I think with orchestra, and I was really feeling it, really feeling it. And simultaneously was feeling pretty good about myself. I was like, oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> like, I'm really feeling it, you know? <laughs> and he came up. If there's anybody aspiring to be a conductor or a director here, this is a classy piece of, information, uh, uh, of advice. He took me aside. He would always give the really personal notes aside and not in front of everybody. And he said, Joyce, I really get that you're feeling this. He goes, but I'm out there in the audience and if you do all the work, there's no space for me to come in and decide how I feel about what I'm witnessing. Mm -hmm. And so I would never take away your commitments and your emotional involvement, but I think it's something for you to consider about how much space you leave us. Sure. And that's a, that's a tricky thing because there's so much integrity, especially when it's so real Everything we sing should be real. We should have this kind of connection with everything, but this is particularly real. Mm -hmm. The same time, you want to leave a little bit of space. So, for example, right away you showed us all her torment. So that by the time you got to the end, I was kind of tired, like exhausted. Yeah. Because, and maybe that's a good thing, because she was exhausted, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I mean, that puts us in that world but I think there's something to being a little colder. And I think, I mean, please correct me if I'm interpreting this wrong, but it's not emotional the way he writes it. There's a few accents. A transport arrives. At 4 a.m. this one from Holland. A thousand women, just like my own transport the year before. There's no emotion. It's um, when somebody's talking about trauma and they have to sort of disassociate mm -hmm. and I think if you experiment, eh, I'm not telling you to do it this way but experiment with what it feels like to present it more disassociated out of protection Absolutely. you know, and not so much anger from you 
so that by the time I loved how you went into the guard, I, lo I was so clear, and that was very, it was chilling actually, the way you do it, it's fantastic. But I think if you are a bit more distant and just, just the facts, mm -hmm. because if you, if you go too far too fast, uh, you can't. So there were women and they were on the train and uh, I was told to, to do this and she said, crisp, do, and give, give yourself a place to build to. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna, we're gonna be with you for longer part of the journey. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Can we just start it again? And don't forget that I don't want you to feel like you're performing this. I want you to feel like you're telling us the story. Mm -hmm. That it's just as if you were reciting it. Transport arrives. And he gives you those accents, right? At 4 a.m. this one from Holland. A thousand women. Just like my... And it doesn't have to be a thousand women. You know, it can be a thousand women. Because that each one of those, you remember her face. But if you, if you open too fast the floodgate, you can't tell the story. Yeah. And I think that's in the, the way he's started to write this. So the bravas at the end, those open, and there all your emotion is pouring out the way he's written it. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So I want to go back to the beginning, but then I want to I show you a few things. You got three long beats in that measure. <laughs> I do. If I had an A-flat like you, I'd be excited to get in there and sing it too. But imagine, Auschwitz, oh God, boom, mm, mm, and Magda, ta, because it's the first time you say her name, right? Mm -hmm. How do you feel about her? Not good. Yeah. So you're going to choose to say her name, and you're going to choose to tell that memory and mm -hmm. conjure her up. You need some time to find that strength. Yeah. And he gives you three fantastic beats. Mm -hmm. And you took one. Then, as we get to the end, pay attention to how long those notes are. Because this is where the emotion comes, right? So, and I feel my arm rise. Make sure that's really clear. And then, you will not be one of the dead today and you cut it off sort of around there mm -hmm. so take the good breath and make us feel all of that okay so pay attention to the lengths of those ending in the, at the end yeah because that's where then the emotion can like a volcano come through uh-huh if you paste it mm. so a little bit detached just tell the story just the facts he doesn't have you holding any notes hardly at the beginning. Just, I mean, a little bit, but it's very convers. It's very cold. Yeah. What happened in Auschwitz? This, this is a stupid question. Okay, there, that, that is one place I would, I would highlight this. This is a stupid question. Mm -hmm. He gives you the dotted with an accent. Stupid question. Mm. Stupid. Mm. You ask me about Auschwitz? Yeah. That, that, it can be a little bit more cold. And, and it's a little bit relaxed. Right? This, this is a stupid question. This, this is a stupid question. Mm -hmm. If you knew what it was, you wouldn't ask me. Yeah. And now I have to talk. So there can be a little bit of that uh, 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 oh, bile in that. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. What happened? What happened in Auschwitz? Okay. And rhythm. Be really strict about it. What happened in Auschwitz? Mm. What happened in Auschwitz? And yours is what happened in Auschwitz? It's a little bit more relaxed. Okay. So if you're really clear on these rhythms, we get the how difficult it is, okay? Mm. What happened in Auschwitz? What happened in Auschwitz? This, this is a stupid question. Take a deep breath. What words can capture those
Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. There's one thing you could try too. What words can capture those? What's the right word? Kind of close, and then kind of back off from it, mm. because how do you describe that? How do you find that the echoes? Because you hear them every night, you hear them every morning, right? What words? Let it open up. Can capture those echoes, echoes. Mm -hmm. There's the pain. Okay. Good. And now, detach from it. All the same rhythm, but don't let us feel all the anger yet. Okay. So the same clean rhythm, but dry. What happens? What happened in Auschwitz? This, this is a stupid question. Okay, and this is a tiny thing, guys, but this is like score study. The first this has a tenuto, it's not an accent. You're giving me an accent. Mm -hmm. This, this, this is a stupid question. Mm -hmm. So it's tenuto accent. They should feel different. Mm -hmm. I assume. <laughs> I'm assuming, like if he went to the trouble of dash accent, you know? Yeah. yeah. This, why would you ask me that? This is a stupid question. Mm. What happened in Auschwitz? This, this is a stupid question. Big breath. What words can I capture those? Oh, yeah, but you're, oh, yeah, with beautiful color, but it comes too soon. Okay. You gave me this echo color on those, and I, I think it'll be really good. Mm. Let it be an echo. Okay. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. And the pain in those stay with it. Okay. Mm. What words? What words can capture those echoes? Memory. Faces. Faces. Okay, but make sure you, you, you have to phonate the first. A transport arrives. Mm -hmm. Don't still sing it. Okay. <laughs> it's beautiful. I love that phrasing of capture those echoes. Okay, mm -hmm. so right on. A transport mm -hmm. phonate. A transport okay. arrives. Okay, accent on transport. A transport arrives. Oh boy, did you hit them, Ma. A da da ba be Yeah. A transport arrives at 4 a.m. This one from Holland, a thousand women, just like my own transport. I knew before. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. But what I would love to feel is that this is all one sentence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like my own transport the year. Don't cut that short. Transport the year mm. before. Because you're giving me just like my own transport the year before. Mm -hmm. And so connect all of that. Because the memory will not let you go. And right. you see it. Like you're on that train and it's coming. So stay with it. Stay with it. Okay? okay. A transport. Fill in the, the rests with your energy. A transport arrives at 4 a.m. This one from Holland, a thousand women, just like my own transport. I knew before. But now I have a position in the But now I have a position in the camp. Huh, it starts to come up. And I think you can let that open up a little bit. Mm. Vocally, you know? And then you come back, no. The women 
must line up for inventory, but there's chaos, confusion. They run, mm. and I would keep all of those quarter notes so that we get that. Wrong song. Wrong song. But but it has to. It has that feeling. I mean, we're sort of in Weimar Republic in Germany and all that. And that's the horror of it. Yeah. That it's still dancing. You know, it's still that. Mm -hmm. So, I want to go back. Uh, um, at 4 a.m., this one from Holland. A thousand women, just like my own transport. The year. You're still cutting that short. Okay. Okay? So, and it's just going to keep it sort of military which is the only way you could get through that. You had to follow orders, do it, get it, do it, be there, right? Mm -hmm. So at 4 a.m., go from there. Mm. At 4 a.m., this one from Holland, a thousand women, just like my own transport. machine and it's the only way you could function mm -hmm. okay the women the women must line up for inventory but there's chaos confusion they run in circles clearing where is my Circles crying, where is my mother? Where is my child? And I would really use those slurs that he gives you, like a cry, like it's crying out. Can we go from um, the women must line up? Yeah. The women must line up for inventory, but there's chaos, confusion. They run in circles crying. Her, okay, as you do, yeah. but that name, uh, yeah, 
taking a big big pause and I think it will be super effective if you take it later with your pause you know and make sure you pay attention to that rhythm instead of with your pause with your pause it sets us up back into that tempo sure yeah Mm -hmm. we have to stop I mean this is such an this is really it's it's so beautiful to work on this with you and everything I'm telling you is just for you to think about sure. and assimilate in in a way that you want because you feel this so deeply and I think you should play with varying don't just let it be one gear that you go into right from the start oh completely and just see how that feels and where it takes you mm-hmm. and give yourself options yeah. you know but it's a beautiful piece and I mean, Jake, wow, it's so beautiful. Voluta.
sometimes be greater when then you open up it's just great the place I would love to look at yes. is especially when it just goes oh my god it's so beautiful Vagabonda. can we go from there um, 69 70 and it's piano right Joyce, you're not jealous that you don't get to sing this. It's all fun. I'm a little jealous. Um, but this should... Yeah. Use that N. Use a, a vagabonda. And this should... I mean, we really want to make sure we've got yeah. the dome happening, but also that it's stretching out sort of that way as well, you know? This yeah. kind of two-way stretch. Does that make sense absolutely. if I say that? Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> and just let the wonder of it okay. just fly. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, one more feet. Where you're going okay. with that, okay? Yeah. And keep the message. Just keep 
this spinny magic. Okay. I see it in your eyes and I want to hear it in your voice too. Okay. Okay? Um, Obama? in your 
your life do you experience ecstasy? Just when I'm singing this. <laughs> so stay there. Yeah. Feel it. Okay. Because if you let that in, mm -hmm. we're going to be right there with us. And we're going to be like, I haven't felt that in so long. Thank you. Yeah. You know? Okay. I, I have to tell a quick story. Okay? Because this is what I, I don't know why I keep hearing Domingo in this. I know it's not his role. But <laughs> I, I did the Operalia competition yeah. way back when. And I came in second place. Erwin Schwatt got first, and I shared second prize with Ludovic Tetzier. It was, a, it was a cool year. And afterwards, in a fever of some sort, I'm sure, he came up to me afterwards, after, in the, after the concert, uh, after the competition, and there was going to be a concert a month later. He said, oh, we should sing the Adalgisa Polione duet. And I went, sure. I had never wow. sung Adalgisa. Yeah. And I think he forgot that it's been a while since he sang it. But when I came back a month later, I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked on it. And I'm sitting on stage, like fresh out of Kansas City, and I'm singing on stage with Placido Domingo. And I'm like, no, no, I can't, no. You know, like <laughs> doing not at all Jesus. I was just like, it was just so surreal. And he was kind of trying to remember how his part went and singing it amazing, like sight reading it, but like gloriously. And there's this one part where he goes, Adalgisa. And he took this thing and he went, and I just literally went, say no, no, you know, and it was this color of voice and this mastery of sound all in the service of what was happening here. So listen to some of that okay. thing. So when you get sorry, it can be here because then it's going to open up. Mm -hmm. So enjoy going from to that the ecstasy of that. Mm -hmm. So let us just go back a little bit okay. one more time mm -hmm. because I would like to be in ecstasy again. Oh okay. vagabonda. <laughs> I kind of was just there for a second, but I digress. <laughs> so reminder, lots of V, lots of N on Bonda. And this is when time just starts to stretch this way. Mm -hmm. Don't schlep, okay. but let time become this. Yeah. Okay? Okay. And. Oh. Not being, I mean, but but there's another ten percent there Absolutely. that 
don't ever skimp on that final 10%, you know, for something like this. Yeah. And then put it away for a little bit mm -hmm. and rest and like do some, <laughs> da, 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 you know, but it's, sure. it's really thrilling. Pay a little bit of attention in the low stuff. Yes. About not shying away from really clear vowels. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't go at it too much. Mm -mm. Like, ah, uh, keep it really uh, speaky uh, and yeah. keep the vowels really clear. Because okay. I get the impression you're trying to make a little bit of sound there. Okay. And just phonate. Just found it okay. on a pure vowel. Thank you. Beautiful. Kevin, Thank you. just gorgeous <laughs> vowel. talking a lot about your feelings of being a performer and an activist, rascal kind of performer. <laughs> and I was wondering where you felt, sorry, I'm phrasing the question right, hold on. Um, as a growing artist, when did you find the line between what, did you, what you needed to do to be a good artist, follow the rules, and also to speak up for what you believed in? Ah, uh, that's a good question. Hmm. What do you mean, what I believe in? In terms of, of musical things or? All of in the above? Yeah, so musical things, what you wanted to be as an artist, what, did you, what you wanted to present yourself, and also maybe even more the political things that you're standing okay. for now. Just as a as a young artist, I mean, I very much fell into the category of, is it okay? Was that okay? Maestro, was it good? Was I in tempo? Was I okay? Uh, which is, you know, I finally had to break that habit in my late 30s. <laughs> that it was always like I was afraid that I wasn't good. And so I spent a lot of time, uh, was it okay? Could you hear me? You, and, and I realized that um, it was sincere, and I really wanted to know, but at some point, it's nobody's job to tell me that I'm okay. You know, they'll tell me if I'm behind the beat. They'll tell me if the, for the most part. I always tried to sort of, you know this, I'm sure, but in an opera house or in an in a orchestral situation, there's usually one pair of ears you can identify or they are going to be pretty helpful and use them and give me every note. I love being given notes. Give me the information. I won't take it personally, even if it's hard to hear, because I can work on it and become better. So I was never afraid of, of notes being given in a humane way. And the more notes, the better. And the funny thing is, now that I'm Bruce Leonardo, like nobody wants to give me notes, and I'm like, I know there are notes to be given, and like, oh no, whatever, and I just like, just give me the information, because then I have the power to actually do something about it. Politically, um, it's a really, it's a tricky thing because there are some people that say, just shut up and sing. That's all we want. Um, and I've always embraced being an artist and a singer, and I love singing, but I'm a citizen first, and I don't know how not to be a citizen. And I don't know how to sing about love and justice and um, humanity, and then pretend like that's, I'm not supposed to talk about it off the stage. I don't know how to reconcile that disconnect. And I, I feel that singing Mahler and Bach and Mozart, 
has made me a better person. And I feel like it has been my greatest teacher. And I don't know how to turn that off. I was really busy for a long time trying to learn how to sing and get better. That sort of, un like we spoke about yesterday a bit, sort of until Dead Man Walking entered my life, I didn't quite believe in the power of opera especially. I didn't quite say, yeah, but I mean, it's just opera. It's not really going to change any lives. And I have since had that disproven time and time again. So now I've seen firsthand the power of it when it's given with real earnestness. Is that a word? <laughs> Earnesty? I'm going to stick with earnestness for the moment. <laughs> and that has empowered me. And it wasn't like, I've got to do something about this. I was like, I have to, this is affecting people. And it's impacting people. And I think it was just seeing that in action, that, that once that door is open, it's really hard to, to close it again. But I'm really clear in that I don't think that has to be the path of every artist. And you guys in particular are being born into a world where it's going to feel like you have to do that. And you will know if you're going to be called into, into taking up different um, causes. But it's also enough just to sing well. And that's really important. Not everybody is, has that call. And I don't think it's fair of people to expect it. You also can just sing beautifully and have it in the intention of that night to touch people. And that's a lot. That's a lot. And I wouldn't add anything else on unless you have to. And unless it aligns with everything else that you want to keep going in your life as well. But if you feel that you have to, you have every right in the world to do it. Might not be an easy path, um, but you should do it. And you should have grace with everybody around you, whether they're doing it or not. You know, that's, I think it's, it's important not to judge other people because there are some artists that all they can do is get a foot on the stage and phone in. And that's a lot. That's enough. So it's, it's a really individual thing. It's come into my life and I, I feel to do it. I also am very fortunate in that I have a kind of platform now um, that I feel a responsibility to use. Um, but that's me. It's a good question. Thank, Thank you. you. I hope you don't mind. I, I am crazy and I wrote down a ton of questions, but I have one more if that's okay. Um, uh, we got to work with James Dara this past semester to do oh, yeah. uh, La Clemenza di Pico, and I've been really excited about um, video and like bringing opera into, I guess, the modern realm. Um, and I was wondering if you could speak to how you adapt and how you see yourself as a performer of like the classics versus being a performer as a like progressive in, into it's this It's all the same world. thing. It's all the same thing. And it comes down to whether I'm being truthful or not. Because I'll tell you, don't make any mistake that how modern and pertinent Clemenza di Tito is. You know, and even Barbara of Seville. You know, it's the clash of generations. You don't understand me, kids these days. You know, and, and we get to come and laugh, but I mean, it's everything. Here, here's what I found in opera, is there are sometimes there are plots that you're like, oh, okay, and then she does, right, okay, and then that, ha right, and of course he's in disguise. And you kind of roll your eyes. <laughs> I have yet to find, and I've done some doozies. I did Dona del Lago. <laughs> um, I have yet to find a false emotion in any opera, if you take it seriously. If you do the work and find the truth in that emotion, there's, I've yet to find anything false. Might be a little exaggerated, you know, but, and you can look at the plot and go, oh God, that would never happen. But the emotional life of what's happening in Puritani or Sonambolo or Dona del Lago, it's real. And that is 
modern and i think we have to own that as opera singers people in the opera industry i think we get into trouble when we pretend that we're something that we're not or we try to be something that we're not and where i found my power is to actually lean into the opera i'll give you an example um and then i want to do a follow-up thing with that as well um i through a program at Carnegie Hall, uh, they go into Sing Sing Maximum Security Prison and they teach the men incarcerated their composition and instruments and they teach these men to write music. And they now have been doing it about 15 years, not the last two years, which is really tragic. When I found out about this, I said, I wanna go. Had I not done Dead Man Walking, I don't think it would have occurred to me but I was like, no, I can go into a prison. I did it on stage. <laughs> and I went there and they had relayed a message. They said, we have an opera singer coming. Do you men want to write anything for her? And I had about six guys write mostly duets for me because they also wanted to sing with me. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and they said, but have her bring opera. And so what they do is they workshop and they, they do their things in a group of about 25 men. And then once a month or so, they go into their general auditorium and they give a concert and men can sign up and, and attend. So there was, when I did this concert, there was maybe 250, 300 men, the general prison population there, um, separated by cell blocks because of gangs and all this. And, I thought, Joyce, you're really not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> but they requested that I bring opera and perform. I was going to do two pieces on my own. And so I'm sitting here going, what do I bring operatic into Sing Sing Prison? <laughs> and I thought, OK, if they want opera, I'm going to bring opera. And I started with Piangero from Julius Caesar. It's about seven minutes long. And it's slow. It's not very exciting. It is if you know it, right? And so I'm sitting here going, my life is so weird. And I get introduced by this lovely guy. And I come up to the microphone. And, and I say, hi, I'm Joyce. I'm from Kansas. And do any of you guys know, hallelujah, hallelujah. And they're like, hallelujah, hallelujah. I, they knew the tune. They knew the tune. And I said, I'm going to sing a piece written by that guy who wrote that piece. So immediately. They know where we are. Is it? You've heard of Cleopatra, Queen of the Nile. <laughs> said, I'm going to sing her. You'll have to use your imagination, but I'm going to sing her. And here's what happened. Her lover has been killed, the love of her life. And the first time in her life where she's had everything handed to her, she knows real grief and loss. So you're going to hear me say, Piangero, which means I'm crying and she's gonna repeat it over and over because she can't comprehend the grief she has. And then, stay with me because opera's a little bit long. I said something like that. I said, the music is gonna change. It's gonna get really fast and kind of violent because she's gonna say, I'm gonna, if I die, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna haunt you and I'm gonna make you pay. I'm gonna get revenge on you for killing the man I love. And then the music's gonna go back to how it started and she's gonna say again, Piangero, because she knows that revenge isn't going to bring her anything. And as I'm telling this story, I'm like, you haven't really thought this through, Joyce. <laughs> but I was like, I'm in it. So, and it's, it's what it is. And I started, boom, Piangero. And they were not with me. They were rustling. The auditorium was super dark. It was, they were talking. And, and then there was rustling paper. And I thought, how do you get out of this? Like, what are you doing? But I, I thought, I'm going to lean in. Like, I'm not going to back off. I'm going to lean in. And I'm, I sang it as if I was singing it at the Met. And then the middle section came. And the air in the, in the auditorium just went. They felt it. They felt the music. And they started hearing, Ma poi morta, dormi torma. And they started yelling out, yeah, yeah, you go girl, you yeah, make him pay, yeah. And they were, it was like Shakespeare's Globe Theater. And then, da -da 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 I've never felt electricity. 
electricity like that in a performance before. They don't know a da capo aria from a blah, blah, blah. They felt the music. And afterwards, I could have signed autographs for I don't know how long. Then I sang Tanti Affetti, and I said, how many of you guys know This was written by that guy. And the thing you need to know, this is the end of a long opera, so it's a long aria. You're going to think it's over a couple times, but it's not. But just keep listening how I, because I'm so happy, I'm going to sing faster and higher. And I set it up like that. I got three standing ovations in the middle of the aria because they were excited by what they were hearing. I can't say I sang it particularly well that in that circumstance, but they'd never heard a voice do that. And that, that are, that's two of the oldest, like, not even, it's not even a cerva voluta, you know, it's like, not the easiest arias. And they felt it because I gave it to them 100%. I didn't bring uh, O Sole Mio, something that's like an easy tune. I went into the heart of what we do. So that's kind of, it's a very long story, but it's an important one because I think before that, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm just an opera singer. Like, oh, you know, it's kind of old fashioned, we're a little outdated. And I was in that mentality. And it is so misguided. This industry doesn't own what we are nearly enough for my taste. So you aren't going to believe what we can make you feel. And then we have to produce it. We have to give them the feels through beautiful singing, through perfect languages, all that stuff that we do. In terms of what's expected now of going out and sharing it on TikTok and da 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 none of that's going to matter if you don't sing unbelievably. So my advice to you guys is there's a lot being asked of you right now, and you have to master a billion things. I was on the, I was there when social media started, and I went in. I mean, I blogged, and I was, I was sort of on the front edge of all of that. And I have mixed feelings about it now, and I've kind of pulled back from it, because my standard of posting something, whatever, was do I have something to say? And what is it I want to say? And what effect do I want this to have on people? It breaks my heart on Instagram that I'll do like beautiful photos of a flower or of like a something and I'll write something really profound and it has like, you know, a couple likes. And I'll do a selfie with sunglasses and it's like <laughs> And I'm like, oh, how many times do you need to say, you know? So I don't like that it's that superficiality and that expectation, but I get that it's part of the game. So, and, I, and the, the weird thing is, is that it's all formulated now. Like it has to be this and it has to look like that and you have to say this and you have to tag. So that is not gonna give you a career. And Try not to, to believe that it will. I have to do this, and if I don't do that, da, da. if you get up here and you sing in a way that moves people to tears, you're going to have an amazing career if you know what you're doing. And trust that that's your power. And the rest is glitter. <laughs> okay? You don't need a manager until you have something to manage. And you don't need, you're not going to have something to manage until you're clear on what it is you want to put out into the world. It's not just, I have to do that young artist program, and then I have to go here, and then if I don't do that program, no. What, why are you singing? What do you want to say? Find the best way to do it. And when you're clear on that, then you have a manager to manage what you want to build with your career. You don't need a PR person until you have something that you want to publicize into the world. The rest, it just, it's not gonna, it's just not gonna land. Because eventually people see through that if there's no content there, there's no content. It's fine if you want to be like an influencer, then you need content. But if you want to be an opera singer and transform people's lives, there has to be more than just that, ah, there. You can do that, of course, and build your brand and all of that. 
But if those fundamental things aren't in place, it's, it's gonna last two seconds. So I know it feels like the foot is on the gas a thousand percent. Your job is the music. Your job is figuring out the purity of getting that music across and trusting that, trusting the power of that. And the clearer you are on that path, the more people re will respond and listen. And just pay attention. You know, there are a few people that slip through the cracks, you know, but, you know, I know, I wasn't here, but I know Julia Bullock just did an incredible, okay, she's not a selfie girl, but she's writing her own ticket in her career because she knows who she is and she knows what she wants to say, and she's working hard to get it out there. That's a great example of, of somebody using the world today to say what they want to say and shaking it up a bit is pretty, pretty exciting. That makes sense? Yeah. Be really supportive of each other, guys, too, because it's a lot, there's a lot being asked of you. And just take a deep breath, it's all good. Just sing. Yes. Okay. Um, hi, thank you so much for everything. I'm like very starstruck right now. <laughs> um, so, as singers, we can be a bit neurotic, which is only natural considering our bodies are our instrument. We are the instrument, there's no separation. And I feel like we can easily fall into like living a very regimented life for that reason. And it can be hard, and I'm speaking from my own experience, to find a balance between like being responsible and taking care of yourself and your instrument and also being a human being. And, living life the way that brings you joy and stuff. So I guess I'm curious what that balance looks like for you in your well, life. What does it look like for you? I don't know. I'm, I'm on that journey of figuring it out. Which side do you fall more on, the neurosis? Um, I the think joy. I used to be more neurotic than I am now. So what changed? <laughs> Just realizing that I don't think my best performances happened after I was really like, I can't have a glass of wine for like three weeks before I sing one song, you know? Um, and just being a little bit more relaxed and just having a, a good day and like walking around and like meeting people and then having a performance can sometimes be more successful. I don't know. Sounds like you have the answer. But I, I wanna know what it looks like for you. <laughs> uh, I, I was pretty lucky in that I had an example of what I didn't wanna be when I was young. So in undergrad, um, there was kind of a star singer there. It wasn't Miss Cook. <laughs> um, there was kind of a star singer there. And she couldn't go on, and she got all the roles, and she was an amazing singer. She drove herself crazy. And she couldn't go on stage if she didn't have this and that, and she was just, you know, it just nervous the whole time. And I was like, I mean, I love being on stage, but that's a lot of work. And so I had an example of what I didn't want to be. And I... I really, I mean, this is a long process. Once you have a baseline of technique and, and repertoire and things, that's kind of the easy part. You have to maintain it and all. I think the real work is what goes on in here. And I think that it is what the difference is between people that build a, a good career. And that can be regional, it can be international, but where people are happy, where people are doing doing it, in a, it's, it's a really brutal business. It's a really hard life. And if you don't learn how to make it easier and open your arms to the wholeness of what it is, you're gonna be miserable. And it's gonna show, as you know, it's gonna show in your performances, you know? Just quit taking it so seriously and don't take yourself too seriously. I take my work really seriously. I work really hard at what I do. I wanna be really prepared. I wanna take care of, I wanna have a glass of wine and I don't want this that I imagine to be so fragile and that, that, that to like run my life. This obeys that. Boom. It's gonna, you know, you'll get sick sometimes. Okay, then rest and I go, I push too much, okay. You know, and it's this, but overall, this is driving the bus. 
And this is like, Joyce, calm down. You know, it's just gristle. Okay, you have a cold. It's not the end of the world. Take a rest. You know, and you will, with time, learn more and more about what your body needs and doesn't need. But just fast forward 10 years, okay? And you're living, you're, you're having a, a really good career. You're doing what you want to do, but you've done it in an erotic way. That's 10 years of your life. Miserable. And probably making the people around you a little bit crazy too. <laughs> I'm going to guess. You know? <laughs> and then fast forward 10 years where you still do the work, but you also do the life. I don't know if you go to the same stage I, or the same, I don't know, but that's 10 years of your life that you're enjoying. For me, that's, that's what I would like. And I think also one of the things I've always said is like, Joyce, if it ever gets too much, walk away. And I've always had that as permission. So it's not like I have to have this and I want to, I've got a, this kind of, huh? That's a, that's a hard road to walk. I'm super ambitious. I'm a little bit competitive, <laughs> you know, and that's good. That's all kind of, you can't sing Rossini and not be competitive, like, you know. <laughs> but, it, but it's, I think, a pretty healthy thing. But I don't have, I've never been like this with my career. Or I've got I've to get that role. I've got to let prepare and, and it's all going to work out. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. Hi. Um, you speak a lot about leaning in and the truth on stage. And I guess my question is, how do you avoid losing yourself when you do give that extra 10% and that 100%? That's rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And I allow myself in the rehearsal room to go too far. Okay. Because uh, I need to know where that line is. Mm -hmm. um, I, call, I, I refer to it sometimes as like cold tap and hot tap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's like there are times that it just has to be vocal. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to give yourself the time vocally to just go through, thi through things and let it know what it is without the emotional mm, mm -hmm. underpinning on it. Just so your muscles know what it is to be free and unconstrained. Mm -hmm. That's really, that happens a lot before you arrive. And then sometimes in rehearsal, I, I won't sing a lot, but I'll go all in dramatically to see what that feels like. And then you sort of start to mix. Mm -hmm. And you'll know where it's, where it's too much. And then you can figure out how, but your, your job is not to feel it all, it's to convey it mm -hmm. and to deliver it. But I think it's good and, and helpful to feel it along the way so you can let that pass through you. Yeah, yeah. but you didn't buy the ticket so you don't get to feel it all that much. <laughs> <laughs> If you have a question here, yeah. How um, this kind of is a little bit similar to Jasmine's question, but how do you navigate as a growing artist, loving and wanting to go and be a part of a variety of musical eras? There is this sort of, of musical eras. Uh -huh. So there's like this sort of mentality that if you're an opera singer, you only sing this type of music. If you're an early music singer, you only do. And you keep trying to like go, no, I want to do everything. <laughs> I don't think that's true anymore. Okay. I just don't think it's true anymore. Um, I think there's some residual approaches that still exist. Uh, look at Julia Bullock, what she just did here. I have my Eden project that Kathy, thank you for providing. I do Ives and Mahler and Cavalli and Handel and Copeland. <laughs> and I don't do it consecutively. Like I, and because I'm telling a story, you know? The thing is, whatever you do, do it really well. Do it really well. And you know, you may be in a place where you have to tick a few boxes for a while. Tick the boxes. You know, because not everything exists right now. You know, you have your eye there. Tick the boxes if you're in a program or something. But I think it's really shifting. And I think it's, just look at some of the recitals that people are programming, how Jamie Barton programs a recital. You know, I just don't think that's true anymore. Um, be really clear why you're singing something. Uh, step back and make sure you're, you're singing it well. 
um, and maybe hold the audience by the hand a little bit as you as you try new stuff. That you know, we like to be comfortable. We like to know what we're going to hear in in the classical music world. But even that, I think, is is shifting a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. So um, after the pandemic, I think we've all kind of experienced an audition season that's become very crazy and almost overloaded. And so I guess my question is, what advice do you have for students about you know, giving yourself permission and taking the space you deserve in an audition setting or a competition, especially when you're like the 40th person coming in to sing Davy Any? <laughs> what do you think you should do if you're soprano number 40 singing Davy Any or Cardar? I mean, I guess it's, you know, finding yourself in the piece, but I guess can, that can be like very difficult when, you know, you want to get it, you want to get the Mozart right, you want to get the Tessitura right, you don't want your breath to run out at the end, and so. But that is true all the time, it has nothing to do with who sang before you or who will sing after you. You want to get the Tessitura right anyway. You want to get the Mozart right. You never will. Nobody gets Mozart <laughs> right. We try our best. <laughs> but that has nothing to do with who is sung before you. And if you come in with an apology in your energy, sorry, you have to hear De Vieni again, they're not going to hear De Vieni, they're going to hear you apologizing. Mm -hmm. You know? And if you come in as, ha! Ah! You know, they're going to, ugh. They see through it if you're fake and, and oh, hi, you know, I mean, that doesn't work as well. <laughs> if, you, if you're ready to do auditions, you get your audition package ready, take it out there, and you do your audition. And you have, it could be a hundred singers before you or two that shouldn't have any influence on it at all. You come and you do your truth as best you can on that day, and what happens, happens. But you're gonna, if you're spending a lot of energy trying to negotiate what else is happening out there, it's not energy you're thinking about the Tessitura and about Mozart. It's diffused. So you're setting yourself up to already be slightly diminished, right? Again, it's not rocket science. Like, just where is your head? I'm worried about this and that and that and that and that. And none of that's in your control. And that means none of those brain cells are going to keep your mind where you have your power. You know, what happens, happens, I think. Let's have Two, just two, because we have to have a male. No, 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 go, go ahead. Sorry. Hi, I was just. Hi. Oh my God. <laughs> it's very loud. Um, I was just wondering, how how do you remain patient uh, as you're building your technical foundation, especially when the truth that you're striving for in performance is hindered by technical things? Yes. You got to keep the. You got to work on the technique. There's no hiding. And until it's rock solid, you can want to express all you can. I feel you, I feel you. <laughs> I was 28 when I was finishing the Houston, sorry, it was at the end of my first year, I was 27. My first year at the Houston Grand Opera Studio, which if any of you were there last night, I barely got into. But I had been working on, <laughs> this is so funny, Non più mesta, for the first time, all season, all year I was working on it, because I got, I was gonna sing Cenerentola or Cinderella for Marilla in 1996. And I was singing really well by the end of that first year, after a really rough start, where I was cracking in my lesson all the time, okay? I'm 27. We had a donor thing at the end of that season thanking the lovely donors for paying our $17,000 salary that year 
the whole year. Jan Barrows was my sponsor. And we were doing a showcase. And I took out Gnome Pumesta for the first time. And I cracked every single one of the three high Bs at the end, which come one right after the other. And I cracked them so hard. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, and all I thought was, she's going to want her money back, and I've already spent it. <laughs> I mean, cracked, like, and I was in tears at the end, and my teacher came up, and he hugged me, and he said, I'm so proud of you because you're letting go. I was just doing all this muscle stuff, and he took it away from me, and when it came under the pressure moment, I wanted to do it the old way because I knew I could kind of make it work, but it wasn't working anymore, and I didn't trust the new way yet, and I had a lot of emotion I wanted to express, about Cenerentola, she's so happy at the end. <laughs> and I couldn't do it because I did, I, it wasn't lined up yet. So welcome to the, to the wonderful path of patience. <laughs> Consider it your personal guru. And it's just the reality. You're not going to be able to do it until you're ready. So back off. Go over the text. Go over all of it here so it's in your body but back off of it and go back to the cold tap vocally for however long it takes, because you can't fake it. And not in our business. You can fake it in other kinds of singing, but not in opera. That's the beauty of it. And if you open to it and be gentle with yourself, insistent, it's like you have to be impatient and patient at the same time. And you have to be really smart in how you work. Because if you dig in to make it, you're going to you might get through it for a while, but you're going to put it in the wrong way. So if it's a struggle, it's not right yet. And when it's easy, you're on the right track. Thank you. Yeah. It, it, it's so hard, but it's such a good teacher. It is. So just open to it. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. I really loved your comments to all the singers. Um, I have... Uh, a question. Originally, it was five favorite composers. That's out off the table. Um, uh, I want to ask you, what are the five composers that you think are the best at creating character? Handel. Boom. <laughs> Period. You have to work at it, but he's amazing. Uh, Mo I mean, Mozart. <sighs> um, Chegi. <laughs> Obligatory. I like the Chegi very much. Yeah, because he's a storyteller. He's not listening to me, but whatever. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> I want to talk about you. <laughs> Barto, Barto. Um, I mean, Strauss is, well, it depends on, sometimes, you, but Strauss is pretty great. Uh, that's four. Handle again. <laughs> I'll have to look at some more handle then. Handle for the women. Sorry, not so great for the men. I don't think you really cared that much. It was like, ah, well, for the king, whatever. <gasps> I want to write for Alcina. You know, but, yeah. You guys, thank you so thank you. much. Good luck. Stay patient. Stay patient. Super late. I'm so sorry. I could talk to you all night. Go to dinner. Get some rest. Beautiful singing, guys. Really beautiful. <laughs>